By those angels who extract with violence. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنازعات غرقا by the angels who tear the souls of the wicked forcibly غرقا the angel dive deep into the human being and then tears off the soul when it is dying and this is for the kuffar because their souls when they are taken and possessed by the angels it is as if they have been torn you know when nashitati nashta and by those who remove with ease but for the muslims for the believers when nashitati nashtan by the angels who untie gently the souls of the virtuous and the righteous you know they very ease oh. so that is the difference between how an unbeliever dies and how a moment dies the prophet said that the death of an unbeliever is like there's a hot rod on which there is kebab you know and you are just pulling the kebab off that hot rod but at, as for the moments believers as if there was some bag of water and only a drop comes out of it that's all easily there's no difficulty for them but this is the inner aspect outwardly there might be the, or even the believers when they die they might face hard times for the for those who see they might feel that they are having a very hard time because we know that even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the time of death he had much of you know stress and he was in pain agony very severe headache and all these things were there so one is the external aspect which is visible to the people other is the internal aspect when you know this soul is taken away from that body so the, the condition of the disbelievers is different from that of the believers was sabihati sabha and by those who glide as if swimming then taking possession of the souls of these people by the angels who then float swimmingly they go they are going taking away the souls and those who race each other in a race then they go racing with one another they compete i will go further and the other is competing no i go first fal mudabbirati amra and those who arrange each matter fal mudabbirati amra and then they ordain the decreed affair that has been allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them that is where to take the soul either towards illiyin or towards the jinn that we shall learn inshallah in surah al-mutaffifin but according to the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then these angels take these souls to their destinations yawma tarjufu ar-rajifah on the day the blast of the horn will convulse creation tatsba'uha ar-radifah there will follow it the subsequent one yawma tarjufu ar-rajifah wa tatsba'uha ar-radifah upon the day when the shaking thing will shake and then after it they will follow a next blast these refer to two blowings of the trumpets the first day that is asa when the trumpet will be blown the earth and the mountains will shake like anything ya yuhannas ittaqu rabbakum inna zalzalat as-sa'ati shay'un azim an earthquake a quaking a shaking a terrible shaking but after some time then there will be yawmul qiyamah the day of resurrection it will be followed by the second 
blowing of the trumpet, when all will be revived. So these are the two. And we have read it in Surah Zumar also. وَنُفِقَ فِي السُّورِ فَسَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّبَابَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْغَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ سُمَّ نُفِقَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْزُرُونَ So these two blowings of the trumpet. Hearts that day will tremble. Many a heart on that day will be throbbing in fear. Their eyes humbled. Their glances, their eyes will be downcast. They are presently saying, Will we indeed be returned to our former state of life? That will be the picture of the day of judgment, or the day of the recompense. But today what they are saying, Yaqulun, today they are saying, are we indeed to be restored to our former state? Shall we be resurrected when we die and we become bones and clay and, and dust? Even if we should be decayed bones? What? When we shall have become bones decayed? قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة. They say that then would be a losing return. قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة. They say that would then be a losing return. This is a taunting. You know, now okay, yes, as Muhammad is saying, if we are returned, definitely then it is going to be a very losing return. We will be in loss. But they were not believing in it. Indeed, it will be but one shout. But it shall only be a frightening shout. Zajra. Frightening. فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةِ And suddenly they will be alert upon the earth's surface. فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةِ And behold, they shall all appear on the gathering plain. The Madan e Hashr, the plain on which all human souls will be gathered. أَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Has there reached you the story of Moses? Has the story of Musa come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When his Lord called to him in the sacred valley of Duwa. Just recall, when his Lord called him in the sacred valley of Tuwa. And this has come many a times and in details. Here in the, the small surahs, this mention is very brief. Go to Pharaoh. Indeed, he has transgressed. Go to Pharaoh. Surely, he has exceeded all limits. And say to him, Would you be willing to purify yourself? And say to him, Would you like to be purified? Would you like your soul to be purified? And let me guide you to your Lord so you would fear him. And may I guide you to your Lord so that you have his fear? 
And he showed him the greatest sign. Then he showed him the biggest sign, the miracle, the staff turning into a serpent. But Pharaoh denied and disobeyed. But what happened? He belied and disobeyed. Then he turned his back, plotting. Then he turned back hastily, striving to defeat Musa, gathering the sorcerers, magicians, so that there should be, you know, a competition between the two, so that it is proved that Musa is nothing but a sorcerer or a magician and nothing else. So he tried his best. And he gathered his people and called out. Then he gathered the people and cried out. Nada. He cried out and shouted. And he said, And said, I am your most exalted Lord. I am your Lord, the Most High. This is very important and we have read it before also. That he said, Alay Salih Mulko Bis is not the kingdom of Egypt under me. I am the monarch. I am the sovereign. All this irrigation system is under my control. So this is the political sovereignty which he is saying that I am Lord. So this aspect of Tawheed we have discussed in full. The Tawheed on the one hand, Tawheed of creed, Tawheed fil aqida. On the other hand, Tawheed fil amal, Tawheed fil in practice. And in practice, you know, if somebody is following his wishes and desires and lusts and contravening the, the, the demands of, and laws of, of the Sharia, then he has made his nafs his God, his Allah. فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَىٰ So Allah seized him in exemplary punishment for the last and the first transgression. فَأَخَذَ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَىٰ So Allah seized him with his punishment of the hereafter as well as the present. He was seized and drowned with his armies. This was the Punishment of here, of this world, and then the punishment of the hereafter is the fire of the hell. So these both punishments. Indeed, in that is a lesson for whoever would fear Allah. In the Fizalika Libratalimanyaksha. Surely in that is a lesson for him who fears. Whosoever has fear of Allah in his heart, then this story of Moses and Fir'aun, there is a lesson in it for, him, for them. Are you a more difficult creation or is the heaven? Allah constructed it. Are you more difficult to, to be created or the, or the heaven that he has built? When man thinks that it is difficult, it is impossible, how we can be resurrected? But what does it mean? They think that the creation of man is greater, harder, more difficult. For that, that Allah who has created the heavens, are you more difficult to create? Amit Sama or the heaven, Banaha, he built it. He raised its ceiling and proportioned it. He raised up high its canopy and then perfected it and balanced it. 
And he darkened its night and extracted its brightness. And he darkened its night and brought out its bright morning. And after that he spread the earth. And after that, he spread out the earth. He extracted from it its water and its pasture. He brought out there from its water and its grazing grounds. Coming all, everything coming from this earth. We dig a well and take out water from the earth. The tube well is going down and water is gushing out. In the same way all these pastures, all these gardens, all this vegetation is from the earth. And the mountains he set firmly. And the mountains, he fixed them firmly. As enjoyment for you and your grazing livestock. Note this ayah. This ayah will be repeated in the next surah also. Because this surah and the next surah Abbas, they are in the form of a pair. All this is a provision for you and your cattle. But when there comes the greatest overwhelming calamity, so when that great calamity will come, that is Asa. The day when man will remember that for which he strove. That day man will remember and recall what he strived for, what he worked for throughout his life, what was his goals. So actually that day he will recall. I spend my life in what pursuits? For gaining what? And hellfire will be exposed for all those who see. And the hellfire will be made evident for whosoever sees it. So as for he who transgressed, so whosoever exceeded the bounds, bounds specified by the Lord, bounds of the Sharia, bounds of the divine law. And preferred the life of the world. And preferred the life of this world. Then indeed hellfire will be his refuge. Surely then the fire of hell shall be his abode. Now these two things. You know in pursuit of our passions, emotions, our desires, our lusts, this worldly lusts, and so on and so forth, we cross the limits of the Sharia. We cross the limits of halal and haram. And number two, we prefer this life to the life of the hereafter. Now one thing is that you deny that there is no life hereafter, no resurrection. That is kufr of a very high degree. But even if you say, I believe in it, but your attitude in this world is showing that you have preferred this life to that. 
you are working, working more for this life than that. You attach more importance to the comforts and gains of this life than that of the hereafter. So this is what is said here. Asar al hayat al dunya. And whosoever prefers this life of this world, find al jahi mahi al bawa. Surely his abode will be the hellfire. But as for he who feared the position of his Lord and prevented the soul from unlawful inclination, on the contrary, the one who kept fearing and shivering with the idea that one day he will have to stand before his Lord for questioning, for reckoning, for nahan nafsani hawa. And he restrained his baser self, the animal instincts, from the desires and mean and lusts and desires of this world. So these are again two. There was two things. Amma man taga wa asar al hayat al dunya. Final jahima hi al baba. As against that two things. Whosoever was fearful that one day he will have to face his Lord, stand before him for the questioning. And as a result of that, he pulled the reins of his inner libido from all the things which are forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then indeed paradise will be his refuge. For such people, the garden is going to be the abode. They ask you, O Muhammad, about the hour. When is its arrival? But these people, they are asking you, O Muhammad sallallahu about the that hour, that when it will come to pass, when they had no other argument, the last thing, you know, they should say, okay, when will it happen? Tell us. Or oh, bring that chastisement. But here Allah says, yes, kani yana mursa. They are asking you, questioning you, about that hour, when it will come to pass. Fima anta min in what position are you that you should mention it? What concern to you of its declaration? You have no connection with that. This is with us. We shall decide and we know it. It's not your job to tell people when it will come. To your Lord is its finality. Your Lord is, to your Lord is the goal thereof, or it concerns only your Lord, only He knows when that hour will come. You are only a warner for those who fear it. Your position, your duty, O Muhammad Wasallam, is only to warn those who fear it. If they have some fears in their hearts, well, that fear will increase. They will be motivated to take, up, to, take to the right path. So that is your duty. That's your job. And it will be on the day they see it, as though they had not remained in the world except for an afternoon or a morning thereof. The day they see it, it shall be as if they had but lived in this world for only one evening or in addition a morning or more and that's all. All this life 
It might have been 80 years, 90 years, 70 years, but it will appear to be an evening or maybe also the following morning.